Teams about to make their way out onto Morton Daly Stadium. We always tend to see some strange happenings at this venue, Robbie Slater. Yeah, we do, and uh, maybe we might just be in for that again. As you said, two teams desperate for the points. Wanderers certainly in a better position, but a disappointing performance last time out for them after what I thought was one of their best performances the week before. But Brisbane, yeah, that's not a good record. They went one in seven, and they're under the pump, as you will allude to the viewers very shortly with the team lineups really struggling defensively tonight. Yes, there is no Dylan Wenzel Halls for the first time all season. He's been dropped back to the bench after just one goal in his last seven games. Three changes in all. A very inexperienced back line. Brindle South and Courtney Perkins step in for Aldred, who's out through injury, and Gillespie, who's out through suspension. 18-year-old Jordan Courtney Perkins hasn't started since December of 2019. While oh, Brindle South makes his third start of the campaign. The Wanderers, well, Carl Robinson has responded to copping four against Melbourne City by making four changes. Mark Natter is unavailable after concussion symptoms linger. So Tas Mutakoudis gets another opportunity. As part of that back three, Aquilina returns as one of the wing backs. Kwame Yaboa takes on the team that he made his A League debut for eight years ago now. While well, Bruce Kamau will play in an attacking role. It's just his second start of the season. There's been a sub in every other game. So Abini and Troisi drop back to the bench. And Georgievsky was a late call up to the squad in the last 24 hours. Bit of niggle before kickoff. Kwame yeah. Yaboa played 12 games for the Brisbane Roar. Debuted for them as an 18-year-old. Mitch Duke leading the line again for Western Sydney. He's got three in four against the Roar as a wanderer. Last two goals against them. And have been in losing efforts. So there is Warren Moon looking to add to his five wins so far as an A-League coach. And look at the talent on the bench. Scott Neville has returned from his stint in India on loan with East Bengal. And Wenzel Halls and Scott McDonald, who we haven't seen for a long, long time. Maybe they'll come on as a double act in the second half. So a standalone Easter Saturday fixture in the A-League. And away we go at Morton Daly Stadium. Brisbane kicking things off on their home patch. And they are well rested after last week's game at this venue was called off due to the state of the pitch. Yeah, and it's given them time, a long time to, to get things right for this game. But of course, Tony Aldred, we've heard pulled up sore after training yesterday so that's not ideal was Gillespie missing as well but yeah look and you look at the changes Wenzel Halls drops back to the bench you can only go on Warren Moon what he's seeing at training in respect to putting the first 11 out but Scott McDonald is a big plus a big in for them on the bench an early test for Murdakutis his first start since round six the 1-1 one -one draw with Newcastle, that was back on January 29. He's been playing with the NPL side in the last couple of weeks, but Natter's concussion opened up a spot. Decent-looking delivery from Brindle South, but it can sail on the wind at this venue. And the scramble to try and keep it in counted for naught in the end. Corey Brown, the provider of five assists already this season. Courtney Perkins playing on the left side of that defence. Former Joey's World Cup representative a couple of years back in Brazil. Seeing a lot of those players from that squad break into the A-League. He was one of the first.
Well, prior to scored that late equaliser against Newcastle last time Brisbane played. Taking on one of his former clubs as well. And an injury ravaged time at Western Sydney. A dreaded ACL injury in his time with the Wanderers. Bacchus able to shield it from Danzaki. And wrong-footed Wilmering, who's been fantastic in that left wing back role. Yeah, he's certainly made it his own, hasn't he? Because the very experienced and talented Georgievski has kept him out completely of the side. Georgievski is on the bench. Another sloppy start. The throw in bamboozled a few. Taken by Aquilina. Wilmering looking right through the middle. Got a good understanding with Bruce Kamau. Kamau's only two goals for Carl Robinson's side have come from uh, Wilmering assists with that wand of a left boot of his. In Kamau, only his second start, but he's been impressive off the bench for the Wanderers this season. And you think for the Wanderers, for the lineup Brisbane got, they've got to put the pressure on Brisbane here. They haven't won in seven. Yaboa with a burst of speed. Trying to link up with Aquilina. It's proving a little difficult for the players to judge their passes. And watching this game at pitch level for us is Shane Smeltz. How tough are these conditions, Smeltzy? Well, they're actually quite nice conditions at the moment. Driving up from the coast, I thought we were, we were expected to be in, involved with a bit of rain here, but um, the pitch is absolutely beautiful. It's like a carpet, and uh, I think these players are going to be enjoying this. Kai Truen right in the heart of oh, Brisbane's defence. And the no-look pass picked off by Kamau. There's Dorans. Better from Western Sydney. Wilmering trying to bend one around towards Yaboa. Duke picked up the second ball. And Kamau playing central at the moment. Brisbane's young defence under a little bit of pressure. Ninth game for Courtney Perkins. Ninth game for Brindle South. And 14th game for Kai Truen. It's a test for them against the experience of Mitch Duke. And Yaboa and Kamau coming in as well. So, And if you look at the bench, and you, you already get a feeling that the second half could be very, very interesting. With You look at Western Sydney's firepower off the bench. You've got Muller. Troisi, Cox, Bernie Abini. And we've seen how important benches have been to outcomes in the competition this season. Doran's not giving up the chase and kept it in as well. And appeared to be clipped. What's the decision? Yes, the assistant weighs in with uh, that free kick award. Yeah, I think he just hesitated. Maybe an advantage was accruing, but... He gets caught out here, and Dorrance very cleverly just keeps that in play and then gets clipped. A lot of, sorry, Speedy, a lot of firepower in there for Western Sydney. Mitchell Duke, now his ability in the air. Mordekudis as well. Yaboa. And Brisbane are the only team all season yet to concede from a free kick. There's no Aldred, there's no Gillespie. They tend to get on the end of things and head it away from the danger zone. Can Dorans pick out a teammate? Lift it up towards Duke, and now Bacchus. Well defended by Brindle South, put his body on the line. Dylan McGowan trying to tee up Bacchus. Still alive for Yaboa, and showed plenty of it to Brindle South, and now the counter-attack might be on. Led by Champness. Well, as that ball dropped in the penalty area, Kamau should have taken that first time on his left foot. Had a clear side of goal. Mutakutis, the pass will work out in the end. Maybe not the intended target, but Duke picked it up. Good flow about this game on 
Springs. A wonderful playing surface. Has made a fair recovery from being unplayable a week ago. That Western United game was called off. Here's the ball in. This is the original one. Bouncing ball, always a problem for defenders. It's just after this, right there. Would have been worth just swinging the left leg at that. Keanu Backus, not Kieran, of course. <laughs> Keanu Backus. Not a noted goal scorer, four to his name. Has scored some belters in his time. One memorable one at Marvel Stadium. Nebratu was trying to fashion a through ball for Danzaki. By the time he released, may well have been offside. O'Shea. Danzaki. It was awkward for McGowan. Probably could have let it go, but uh, his touch fell for Aquilina. This ball really is pinging around at Morton Daly Stadium. On a fast deck in breezy conditions. I've seen the wind stronger than this at this venue, though, Robbie, with uh, the team going left to right, often having, having the breeze at their backs. Danzaki just didn't get the first touch he was after. That was a lovely ball from Mabrata. Yes, yeah, Super Bowl punched into Danzaki. Should have been able to control that. And if he had of, his next touch would have been a strike goal. Ball speed so important, and this was nearly perfect, but he just can't grab it. Bacchus not done many favours by the pass from Dorans. Chantness hugging that left sideline. Parato just tried to make the run in behind. Here goes Kamau. Taking on Akbari. Gets it back from Duke. Bacchus pass again. Picked off by Brindle South, but he won it back just as quickly. Wilmering delivery to the far post. And Brown claiming the goal kick, and he'll get it. 29th meeting between these clubs, and we're all tied up at 10 wins apiece. They've had some finals clashes as well. The old 5-4 at the old Wonderland. The last meeting between these two was 13 months ago. Brisbane won at 3-1. Scott McDonald at the double in that encounter. Duke's header allowed Kamau to run onto it. Duke on the move again. Wilmering looking for him. Doran's working it wide to... Aquilina, who'll enjoy playing down that right-hand side. So often in his young career, he's been down the left. A natural righty. Brindle South has done some nice things already. Sixth start overall for him in his time in the A-League. Time now for Dorans. Bruce Kamau getting a lot of touches in this opening period. And Duke was looking for him again. Brindle South in two minds wound up controlling him, and I think he was trying to cushion it back for his keeper. What are you making of the position Kamau is taking up? We're so used to seeing him be a flyer down yeah, either down. flank. Yeah, I think, I mean, well, he certainly started well centrally. As we know of his abilities in on the flanks, particularly on that right-hand side. Here he is, linking up with Bacchus. And teeing it up for Yaboa, who returns to Brisbane and scores the opening goal less than 12 minutes in. It all started in this city, in the A-League as a teenager. And he's back striking for Western Sydney. Oh, that's a sweet strike from Yaboa. Set up in the end by Bacchus. Kamau injecting himself in the penalty box as well. 
and the Brisbane defence not committing because these players are in the penalty box. That's a sweet strike. Really crisp. Across the surface here, no chance for the keeper. That's a fine finish from Yaboa. And a game that really hasn't settled in Western Sydney strike. The only threat of that shot being blocked was uh, if Mitch Duke couldn't get his feet out of the way, and he did. And Yaboa has four goals and one assist this season. That was intricate build up play, Shane Smeltz. Uh, a very nice goal from the visitors. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a uh, it was certainly well taken. Um, you both finished that perfectly. He's just placed that in the corner. Um, wonderful work from Backers to set him up. And it was only it was only moments before that you could hear Warren Moon. He stood up and, and was yelling at his players to keep the ball, and he's just done it again. And I think that would have prevented uh, that opportunity coming if, if they had managed to to hold on to it. And that's certainly something Brisbane Raw is going to have to do uh, to get back into this. Mao tried to nick it away from Truant. And uh, they're looking a little nervy. This inexperienced back three for Warren Moon, and you can sense the anxiety on the bench too. And you bow on the you know, edge of the penalty back box, central. You now he was unmarked. Lovely ball again from Wilmering to the goal scorer. And Duke wasn't quite on the same page. True and looking early. Got the speed of Benzaki and Mabratu. Trying to turn Western Sydney around, but it's been a, an assured return from Mutakutis, who gives great balance to the team with these two left footers. And Wilmering plays in Kamal, who tried to go near post. It was going wide. Young still made the save. Well, brilliant run, but the finish doesn't match the run. And he's trying to open himself up. He was never really there to dance across that ball and hit it with his right foot. Should have taken it on his left. Hole of the goal is open to the other side, the right-hand side, left-hand side of the goalkeeper, if you have a look, as he bears down. <laughs> Beautiful ball through. Perfectly timed run from Kamau has scored 10 A-League goals, Bruce Kamau, and four of them have come against tonight's opponents. Chance here for Duke, and it was a tame finish in the end. More focused on keeping it on target than getting yeah. power in it. Yeah. And it just dropped to him, didn't it? Took a first time, half volley. Jamie Young very relieved that that's straight at him and not much power behind it. Campness rolling it square for O'Shea. Brindle South on the front foot, taking on Wilmering. And couldn't bend it back enough. As this corner comes in, just drops the Duke and he sort of scuffs it, doesn't he, on the half volley. You can see Jamie Young very relieved. Two very good chances for the Wanderers to score their second already. Boa flew into the challenge. Backus thought he was clipped. Didn't get any change out of Alex King, the referee, and wins it back after a heavy touch from his opposite number. But he's a little proppy, Keanu Backus, after that earlier exchange. You see that ball lost by Brisbane Roar again. They need to make them stick, and that's where they've missed Scott McDonald. So often the ball goes into him, and he has that capability to hold the ball up. Bring other players into play, that calmness. Good clean challenge from Jack Inge. Carl Robinson's got to be delighted to have a lead so early on on the road. After they were bossed in that first half against Melbourne City. Interestingly, in the history of Western Sydney, when they cop four goals, the next time they play, they tend to win. And if they copped four goals eight times before, gone on to win the next game six times, only lost once thereafter. So they've got good bounce-back ability about them, the Western Sydney Wanderers.
Akbari was double teamed. Yaboa tried the extravagant turn. And Bacchus had no one to go forward to after winning the ball in midfield. Fifteenth game of the season for Western Sydney. Brisbane just their thirteenth. Lost his footing. There's a few players. He's, he's done it a couple slipping. of times. Yeah. And that's what Wanderers will want. Dorans to start bossing that middle middle park of, part of the field. What a beautiful rise that was from Duke. In amongst two defenders, brought it down for a teammate, and now Kamau opens up the angle and nearly snuck it in. At that near post, his eyes are lining up against Brisbane again. He comes inside, makes plenty of room for the strike and tries to surprise Jamie Young at that near post. I think he had it covered. Just a defending there. Shouldn't allow him to come inside. That's what he wants to do. You should be showing him the line. And there's that ball up again and given straight, straight back to the Wanderers. He's an aerial specialist, isn't he, Mitch Duke, the way he brought that down. And he comes in and Windle South allows him to come in, and that's dangerous. When you don't have bodies just behind you, it should be shown in the line there. Lovely play again. By Mitch Duke, a former captain of Western Sydney. And the corner won by Aquilina. Mitchell Duke, always a threat and has had a good start in this game. And that is, since he's come back, it's one thing they have in the armour now is you're able to go along with the real sense that he's going to win balls in the air and bring other players into play. They left him all alone. Brindle South able to cut it out before they got through to Duke. Wilmering, such a balanced footballer. Again, Duke nodding it down. Recently upgraded to that uh, senior deal for the first time after coming through the academy. Doran's all that experience in the UK, in the Premier League in England and Scotland. Passing it around with confidence. The team in white. Doran's dictating the tempo. Rare touch for Ziggy Gordon so far. So much has come down this left hand side. Fancy Yabal would have been offside had it gotten through to him. team has had less than 40 percent of possession so far and that'll help the cause champness upended yeah we've hardly sighted their midfielders on the ball O'Shea is so key to them and Ekbari hardly sighted Barry getting a few touches now. O'Shea under pressure from Kamau showed him a trick. Better by Brisbane. Fans responding. Little dink from Akbari didn't find Danzaki. Bringle 
south and Chantness allowed to turn by Bacchus towards goal. Warren Moon keen for his team to keep it up tempo here and just maybe sensing something here building. Perkins was put under pressure. Kai True and a big job for him to marshal the defence. Still a teenager himself. Playing on the right side of uh, Tom Aldred and then Gillespie on the left side of that back three. So used to seeing those two names on the team sheet, but of course Gillespie picked up that late red card for a second yellow in Newcastle. He was always going to be unavailable. And then Tom Aldred just yesterday pulled up a little sore. He's had some hamstring issues recently, also some groin trouble as well. So we're not quite sure what. Uh, the exact issue is that will come to light post game, I'd imagine, from Warren Moon. Oh, oh, I'd love to have him available for their away trip to Campbelltown next Friday night to take on MacArthur. Good scrap. One by Hingett. Took it off Yaboa. Kept in by Gordon. Danzaki trying to usher his teammates up to provide a press. And no they were easy following. to play through. Yeah, no one following behind. No foul. No foul! Again, they're so outnumbered in the middle here, Brisbane. Don't look like breaking down Western Sydney at the moment, but now they've got a few more numbers committed forward. Hingett tries to get Brindle South on the outside. And delivery didn't give those in the middle a chance. Duke again. Spring heeled Mitch Duke. Diamante like pass. Little no look into space for Aquilina. Glides past Corey Brown and Ricochet is back off him for the goal kick. Well defended by Courtney Perkins in the end. Is it fair to call that the Diamante style pass? Well, it was fair to call. <laughs> what a pass that was. Thinking back to that game, Western United, Melbourne City. That was the pass. Beautiful pass. Nakualina took it on well. Got himself into a good situation here. Just sprints away. Maybe a touch too many. Double ricochet doesn't even get the corner. Jack Ingett starting to win a few of his duels, playing on the right side of that back three. Champness turned into space and had the speed to track it down. Danzaki. Made the run. Chantness. And the deflection goes wide of that top corner. Nearly an individual goal to spark Brisbane. A yeah, great run on it. I'm sure the start of this was a little bit of an accident. But once he started driving and a retreating Wanderers defence, and that's an important block from Wilmering, that was on target. Better from Brisbane. Yet to score for the Raw. And on loan from Newcastle. It's the voice of Alex King telling those in the middle to settle down. Some quality audio work to eavesdrop on that conversation. Whipped in by Brown and the header was there. 
Kai Truen couldn't keep it down. Corey Brown's delivery exceptional once more. Yeah, brilliant ball, flat with a lot of pace. And he knows that's a big chance because he gets there first. Good leap. Can't direct his header on target. Maybe put off just a little bit by the defender there coming in at the end. Aquilina. Look at all the space for Bacchus. Brisbane finally getting a couple of shots away in the last minute or so. It's another slip from a Wanderers attacker. And Hingit looks early. Well, I think Duke was expecting contact from behind, but I think he's feeling and there was no one there and he fell over. Pulled the seat from underneath him. Held uh, basketball defensive manoeuvre. Shane Smeltz, better signs for the home team in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, without a doubt, they're back in this. I think, uh, you know, it was it was some worrying times just after that goal. I think you could see the confidence rise from, from Western Sydney Wanderers and they've got the players that can hurt you. But I'd just like to see from Brisbane Raw, sorry, as the chance comes in here, but uh, from Brisbane Raw, the, the front two, I think one of them, the, their threat needs to be getting behind because, they've, you know, they've got real pace uh, from Mabratu and Champness and they just don't seem to be getting in areas that are hurting players. I think Champness had that one opportunity where he was running at someone before, but um, I'd like to see them get on the ball a little bit more. Yeah, he showcased all of his speed and skill for that shot. Closely cropped for this one is Joey C. Neat step over from Alex King. Here's Champness again. So quick off the mark. Brown, chance to deliver once more, and Ziggy Gordon in the road. He's won another header, Mitch Duke. And teammates know that they can uh, gamble on Duke winning those little aerial duels. And Yaboa was there to react. Now Dorans. Kamau was on, Yaboa. Went back to Bacchus instead. And it all got a little clunky, this move forward from Western Sydney. They do lead thanks to Kwame Yaboa's 12th minute strike. Here he is offside. Good work by that inexperienced backline to step up and catch the former raw man. And it took him uh, 12 games to catch the eye of talent scouts in Germany. Headed overseas for a decent stint before returning to Australia and taking up the opportunity with Western Sydney. 56th game overall for him tonight. A slip and not a foul, according to Alex King, as Champness looked for a whistle in vain. Good win there by Mabrato, a rare miscue from Wilmering with the pass. Brindle South kept this attack alive for O'Shea. Dansaki making the move in behind Mutakudis. And McGowan there to cut things out. A good movement from Danzaki. Came short, then get it, gave O'Shea the option as he checked. And went in, got him behind Mutakudis. Dangerous ball, no one come to that near post. Brown's last delivery caused havoc, set up Truant for the header. Similar delivery here and awkward for Aquilina. He's got that assignment on Kai Truant, who looks like the target of these uh, corners. Brown 
down once more. Duke using his head again. Brisbane's evening up that uh, possession stat slowly but surely. Courtney Perkins asking for options. Corey Brown was still getting back into position after taking those corners. Shane Smeltz was asking for a bit more movement from this pacey front three to get in behind and they're causing a few dramas now. Oh, Chambers and Margush down smartly. Yeah, good save because it looked like his momentum was taking him the other way. He was able to readjust and get down to a lot of space for Ch Champness. Makes it just that little half yard past Ziggy Gordon. In the end, it's a comfortable save, but it's Better signs again from Brisbane have really controlled this last 15 minutes. Mark Gush has made more saves than any other keeper this season. It's uh, number 65 by my count. No surprise that Brisbane get better. Oh, Gordon, oh. interesting, letting uh, his keeper come and deal with that one. When JSA gets on the ball, when he's getting on the ball a lot more, it's clearly a foul. I got that wrong. Save number 45. He's faced 60 odd shots now. Most shots of anyone, most saves of any keeper this season. Game number 15, and the Wanderers' defence was a little shaky earlier on in the campaign. Tighten things up. Ziggy Gordon's been a star all season. Truman did well to find a teammate, and Chant has tried to nick it over. Ziggy Gordon, which is easier said than done, and a handball has been spotted here. Ziggy Gordon's not sure about the call. He's probably thinking, if I'm in my penalty box, you don't call that a handball, because it was a close range. What are you doing calling it up here? O'Shea used to take just about every set piece Brisbane had, but Corey Brown now takes uh, precedence with his delivery this season. Look at that shape again. And the referee has spotted a little bit of blocking going on. Bit of an anticlimax. Wonder is the team so speedy that you know, balls that are going up now where in that first 15 minutes they were sticky and they were playing very well, but they've certainly lost their way. The important thing for them, of course, is they're still one up. Brato didn't have to go that way. Plenty of space to turn inside like Chantness did earlier on. Brisbane did win four games in a row earlier this season. We're right up there at the pointy end of the ladder, but uh, slim pickings lately. Trying to come from behind here. Kamau with the surge. The boa flag staying down for now. Slams it in the back of the nets. Brisbane asked for a flag that had to come. The only chance this goal stands... This comes off a Brisbane defender. Exactly. So VAR will run the rule over that. That's what Yeboah thinks, because he knows he's in an offside position if it comes off his player. This will be interesting. Kamau did well. He doesn't stay on his feet. It comes off him, doesn't it? Perkins 
Courtney Perkins might have uh, played it into Kamau. It appears to ricochet off Kamau into Yaboa's stride. And because Kamau was being fouled, we'll come back for the free kick because no advantage accrued. Just trying to ascertain whether there definitely was last touch Kamau. It's the best angle they've got at the moment. Which isn't going to overrule the on-field decision you wouldn't have thought. It's uh, Casey Rybelt back in the VAR centre. That's the experienced uh, W League whistleblower. Not a bad idea from McGowan. He's upset that uh, no one's coming around the back post. What energy to win that back. And now Duke with a cute one around the corner. Yaboa with strength. Poked away by Akbari. Space as a result for Brisbane to potentially exploit. Clever by Danzaki. Champness having a go down the right hand side. Bit of an overload here of Brisbane players, but they passed to a wanderer. That pass did Yeboah no favours. Heavy touch by Mabratu. Turned into trouble. Akis double teamed. And he's going to go into the book for it as well. Frustrated to lose possession again, Keanu Bacchus, and uh, went through the back of Mabratu. And static up front because this comes about because it was first come out and the ball ends up with Bacchus, but he had nothing to play going forward. And a few coming together with uh, his opposite number tonight. And that one costs him a caution. Third yellow of the campaign. A couple of players tonight. One yellow away from serving a suspension. Corey Brown is on four yellow cards. And Graham Dorans is on seven. Lovely ball from Truen. Punched out at speed to Champness, back in his regular station. Wanderer started the game at such a high intensity. They've dropped off a little and allowed Brisbane to have the ball. And Hingert puts the head down. Overhit for Mabratu and Aquilina tucked in to clear. One back quickly and the back heel worked out for Corey Brown. Eyes up. Picked out Mabratu who couldn't direct the header on target. Wonderful service again from the left back. Yeah, it could have been his sixth assist right there. Couldn't hold the ball. Again, the Wanderers turn it over. It was Mitchell Duke this time. What about that for a across picks out Mabratu who glances the ball when he needed to get more of a, a forehead on that he's looking for that far post good chance one of their best Brisbane commit numbers forward there in case the Wanderers play out from the back and they're happy to go long towards Duke with those goal kicks and pick up the second ball Boa thought Aquilina would be turning into that space. Young 
Should be able to work it out. Shane Smeltz watching on from pitch level. I'd imagine Warren Moon wouldn't want this first half to end right now. They've got some momentum, Brisbane. Back to Smelty in a moment. Well, I'll answer it for him. I think you're right. Uh, they're in control. They've made a few chances. And he'll feel that you know, they've controlled pretty well the last 25 minutes. Wanderers certainly lost that intensity they had in the first 15. It's been a good reaction from Brisbane and you know, they just need to stay in the game because they've got players to come on. Wenzel Halls, of course, and Scott McDonald. Good win by O'Shea after Brindle South got a handy little touch too. And here comes another yellow card. Bruce Kamau sensed the, the numbers were against Western Sydney and took one for the team. Well, that will be the easiest decision for a yellow card for Alex King this evening. First booking for him of the season. Of course, he's often come on in the closing minutes of games. <laughs> Brindle South copying the inadvertent Falcon. It's, uh, Brought a few smiles to the Wanderers bench. It's always some advice coming for visiting uh, coaches as well from the, the fans here. And Duke gets the decision there after he found the legs of the nearest opponent. and expected a response from his team tonight and he's gotten one just moments away from taking a lead to half time you know i think he'd be you know, in a hurry to get to half time because i think he'd be happy with the last 25 minutes from his side they're gonna have to improve in the second half hingert with a determined run and the header was looping margush was worried and Mabratu couldn't quite fashion the equaliser. No, looping header, like you said, it's slightly behind him. He's done well to get anything on this. And the ball down for Hingard is the right centre half. Slightly behind him and Marcus was certainly concerned. So again, a real half chance for Brisbane. Couple of minutes being added. Uh, that VAR delay to check whether Yeboah's goal would stand. The second one correctly ruled out. First time around. Champness again. Brindle South looking back. Champness's way. Went back to O'Shea instead. It ricochets for Dansaki. Gets the nutmeg on Wilmering. Tried to squeeze the pass through. Tough one for Champness to control, but Brisbane maintained possession in the attacking third in the final minute of the opening half. Time ticking away. Truant. Tansaki. It might work out. Oh, reverse ball was a nice idea for Mabratu, but again, McGowan was in the road. Time is up, but Brisbane 
rebounded from copping that early goal and had the better of the play in the closing stages of that first half but it's still Kwame Yeboah's goal that separates the two sides the Wanderers on track for the win they need to jump to third on the A-League ladder at the break in Brisbane it's the Wanderers one the raw nil and uh, Ziggy Gordon talking it over with Alex King about a decision earlier in the half very jovial character. Here's Iggy Gordon and Alex King doesn't mind a bit of banter either. It's a superb young referee. And Brisbane just have reason to believe that they might be able to get something out of this in the second half.